So guys, the Richard here from World of VFX. Welcome back to our channel once again. Uh, this is the second episode of Blender for Beginners. And in this video, we'll talk about all about the edit modes. And you will learn a lot of things from this tutorial. So without further delay, let's get started. All right, this is Blender 3.6. As you can see, this is our viewport. And the earlier video, if you still not watched, I suggest please go and watch that video. I described all the basic beginner guides over there. So, if you can see this uh, camera, you can find out by default it will come up camera, one light and uh, one cube. So basically these are the all called primitives and these are like camera controls. So if you select any primitive, you can simply directly jump into the edit mode. So to go to the edit mode, you can press tab on your keyboard. You can find out uh, this uh, setup panel will pop up here. This right now we are in, in edit mode. Alright, so if you just go back to normal, you can simply press tab once again, it will back to normal. Now in basic, uh, what you can do with the help of this mini tool, simply you can move it in any axis like X, Y and simply Z. Also you can rotate it just like this in same all axes. This is a normal scale and this is like all the transform scale rotation you can do all together in this single tool. Now this is called annotation, if you want to annotate any specific parts like this, you can, if you want to mark something, you can really do that. And uh, this is called measurement tool, like how uh, like a dip this is. Like if you click drag, so it's 1.7055 meters. This is uh, the measurement tool and it's pretty useful for all interior purposes. And uh, now let's jump into our edit mode. So if you press tab on your keyboard, again, you are right now in edit mode. Pretty nice. So by default, it will comes like this. If you click outside, you will be deselect. Now, first of all, this is called vertex. This is called edges and this is called faces. So for faces, if you select any specific face, these are the things. This is vertex. Simply select, you can find out this vertex. And this is edge, you can simply select it like this. Now, if you already uh, used any 3D software earlier, then these other things are already familiar with you because this is a very basic things for all our 3D softwares. And if you select all, it will come like this. Very simple. All right, if you select this, it will select all together. Now, if you want to move anything, simply select. You can simply press G on your keyboard and you can move it in any direction. Also, if you want to move it in a specific direction, pressing G and hold X to move it in X direction. Pressing G, hold Y to move it in Y direction. Same for Z to Z axis. As simple as that. And also the fun part is if you modify something, let's say I modified this, this, and let's say around this. And if I'll go back to the normal view, it will come like this. If you press Z, 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 like control Z, Z, Z. So basically Blender actually stored is in history. So normal software will did, if you press control Z, it will directly go back to the normal primitive, which is box. But in Blender, if you modified anything, it will literally track each and every parts as in history. This is a very, very good thing. All right, so to move the edges, you can simply select the edges. Also, you can simply go to this move tool and you can directly move it just like this as with, as simple as that. Simply same for faces as well. You can simply move it. You can directly do whatever you want to do. Now, this is like very normal things. Now, let's come to other parts, which is this add cube. If you want to add any cube on a specific surface. Now, see if I just move the pointer it will directly show the faces. So if we just click, drag and drop, so the box will create just top of this box, which is nice. Also, if I want to create a box here, you can create it like this. Not only box, you can create any other primitives like cylinder and all on a specific direction. So pressing Ctrl Z, it will get back to normal. Now my most uh, favorite part, which is the extrude. So basically, if you select any face, if you just click the extrude button, you can find out the circle and this plus. So basically, if you want to click, it will be extrude this face. Also, the shortcut is E for extrude. If you press multiple times E, it will extrude in multiple times. Same for this face as well. So you can literally do whatever you want to do. So this is called extrude. Okay. Now, if you click and hold, you can find out there are multiple extrude modules. So these are the very helpful. So I'll show you just one. If you select this and if you click, 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 if you can see, this is pretty nice. Also, you can move this after extruding. So this is also modifiable, which is nice. So I'm just pressing Ctrl Z and back to normal. Now, the next thing is insert. If you, again, if you're already familiar with any other 3D softwares, you already know about insert. Basically, it will insert the edges. So simply select and find out this. 
if you just click and if you just drag on your mouse you can simply find this edges called inserting also press s on your keyboard to insert it more just like this also if you press e on your keyboard it will extrude simple modeling very simple now let me show you what edges can do if you just select the edges just like this using shift you can simply move this as well so it will become look like a chimney also if you press right click shader smooth it will become a smooth shader and i'm just showing you just normally all right so this is the plus word of insert and uh, next is edge loop cut if you want to make some cuts on a specific direction let's say if i want to make a cut over here also over here and over here as well so basically it will create multiple cuts based on your output if you want more it will create more as simple as that okay so now the next part is if you want more offset edges loop there have multiple loop cuts i suggest please play all the tools next is my favorite knife tool if you want a like random cut out like say if i want to make a cut out like this and it will create just like a simple knife tool so this is also basically a cut tool and uh, but i suggest uh, this can destroy your modeling so please do not use this unless until you really required this now next is called spin tool this is basically extrude the selected vertices in a circle around the cursor indicate the viewport simply select you can select anything like if i select this and if you to simply move you can simply see some amazing artifacts will really create just like this it's nice and it's really amazing see isn't it cool all right i think i never used this previously but if you want you can definitely use this next is called smooth if you want to smooth any specific area uh, let's say i'll select this vertices and i'll smooth this it will become smoother this is basically helpful for all like if you want to smooth anything like pillow or any other surfaces you can really use this smooth tool next is called edge slice and same this is basically like uh, this type of tool like knife and loof cut but this is edge slide if you are in edges mode you can simply slice the edge select the edge and now if you move this you can basically move the edges something like this based on their edge slice mode next one is shrink and flatten if you just click it will basically shrink the very basic naming and basic workflow shrink okay and also this is for shear shear as you all know all our compositors know the what is shear basically see the shearing workflow okay that's it so whenever you have all those things the last one is rip region if you have any uh, vertex which is detached you can simply connect i don't have any detached vertex and in 3d max it will cause something like a uh, hole connect or hole fix something like that only all right these are the things and uh, whenever you have done this you can simply press tab back once again and right click you can press shader auto smooth or shader smooth to make it more smoother we press shader auto smooth you can simply click the shader auto smooth and also you can smoothing up from here as well all right guys that's it for today hopefully you really learn a lot of things from this today's tutorial and if you feel this video is helpful for all of you then definitely hit the subscribe button this is free for you but pressing subscribe this will give us the motivation to create more videos like this i'll create the episode number 3 for blenders if you guys want this so see you next time and also i'll create the episode number 3 very soon till then subscribe to our channel world of vfx see you soon bye bye